see how to create a Google App Engine project in Eclipse and I put it in a Git repo and then push this Git repo to GitHub and get it all that to work. So first I'm going to create a new repository over at GitHub. Uh, I'm going to call it my project. This is my project. And then I'm not going to click there because I want an empty project. And so you see that I'm done. So uh, GitHub created a new project my, called my project. And uh, these are the command line argument um, commands you can do to you know, create a local repo, add your files to it, commit them. And then uh, this one matches the this command here. Uh, matches uh, the the origin. The word origin is saying uh, it's going to refer to this remote uh, repo, and uh, then I'm going to push my master branch over to the origin and uh, and track that branch. Uh, so the master, the local master branch, is going to track the origin master branch. Um, so we're going to do all that uh, from Eclipse and uh, instead so you don't need to type any of that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say file new other first we're going to create a google app engine project it's going to be called my project that's what we said right my project uh, right my project and i'm going to hit next this is user local google app engine hit ok i'm gonna hit finish there uh, now i'm gonna hit next actually because i want to just create a couple of files I'm gonna, hello web app world and then finish so what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this couple of files hello world and app.yaml automatically for me just so i have them and uh, note that this app.yaml that gets created is actually old. Uh, you have to go to the uh, Google App Engine docs page in the Getting Started guide. And the, the new app.yaml looks a little bit different. Uh, so use that one. Don't use this one. I think this will still work, but you'll get into trouble later on. So that's that. That's that. And now I'm going to create a local GitHub repo. So to do that, you know, that's the git in a command, uh, but to do that with an Eclipse, I have to right click there, go to team, then, you, I know you can't see that, but go to team, then share project, uh, team share project will show you this, uh, hit next, obviously you have to have egit installed, the egit plugin, uh, then use or create project, I'm going to select this one, and uh, here it is, that project. I want to create a repository, a new repository, finish. So all that did was the, the git init command. We're going to go back here, uh, git init. Okay, so now we did git init. Now we're going to jump down to the git commit because we already have two files there. So I'm going to go right click again, team commit. And uh, I'm going to say first commit. Now one thing to note is that Eclipse creates these two files, the .project and the project on every one of your projects. Uh, you do not want to add those files to your repo because they contain, you know, information, you know, absolute information about your uh, specific thing. Let's see, this is some stuff I was doing before. Uh, 2.42 uh, workspace, that's my workspace. There's my project, and uh, there it is. So, but if you do that, you can see uh, created a dot grid repo on my project, and then Eclipse added those two files. If I look at those files there, uh, like that one, you see it has the Google App Engine sitting at this absolute URL you know, file directory, user local Google App Engine. So that, that you know, obviously is not going to work for other people that are on a Windows machine, etc. So do not check those in. You should probably put those in your git ignore. So just message, check, check, commit. There you go.
So now I have a nice local Git repo. Now I'm gonna to try to push that guy over to GitHub. So again, right click team, and then I'm gonna, these don't work, so I have to go to show in repositories view. And that's gonna pop up this guy and remotes. I'm gonna right click on remote, uh, create a remote repo of the name origin. Okay. And then here I'm gonna hit change. And uh, that's again the old test. To go now to my project page, click on SSH or HTTP, depending on which one you're gonna use. Uh, copy that, my project, and paste that in there. This is my project now. Da -da 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 -da. If you use the HTTP, then you're gonna need to put in your username and password, your GitHub username and password. Um, finish. And uh, yeah, I believe here we just have to hit save and push. I'll push what I got here to my GitHub account. Ba boom, ba boom. That says it worked. We created a new master branch. Uh, so this is how my project page looked before. Now I reload it, and it's gonna have those two files. Awesome, which I just uploaded. Okay, so, but we're not quite done. Yeah, there were a couple more commands, so we have to now right click here, right click here. So we configure the push, but we also want to configure the pool uh, just to be complete. Uh, also, I mean the fetch. Um, so it says, you know, configure fetch. Please provide a ref mapping. I don't have a ref mapping. I'm going to hit add. And here I just type M, and then it's going to go fetch. And uh, they only want, they only have the master branch. So there you go. Uh, so this is gonna configure the remote repository uh, to match you know, the master branch. So here it is. Uh, finish. And uh, save and fetch. And we did a fetch. I mean, of course, we didn't fetch anything new, um, but. You know what actually happened is uh, if you go to your project there, you go to that git and you do a cat of the config file, you look at the config file. So this part here, this is what we just did. We said that you know origin is gonna refer to that URL and we match, we just added this this line here to fetch. Uh, that the you know the origin master matches my master. And I do a fetch on origin. The master branch over there is my master branch over here. Now, another thing you also want to do is go over here on branches on my local branch, click on the master branch, uh, right click on that, and then configure that branch. And uh, here, the uh, the remote is going to be the origin and uh, your upstream branch is going to be your master and hit OK there and we go back over here we look at the file again you see now we just added this here so this is saying that the remote master branch matches my master branch uh, when doing the merges and so this is you know about this has to do with copying this has to do with the merging. So I, I want to track, my local master branch tracks the remote master branch so that basically they're the same. And every time I pull, I wanna merge the remote master with the local master. Master is just the name. Uh, okay, so what that does is that now, so I can go hello world, and um, what that gives me is that if I make a change, you know, my first change, so I change it, I save it. Uh, you see, it tells me that I got changed. This little arrow tells me that, uh, uh, you know, I have uncommitted changes. So I right click, uh, commit, and, uh, you know, first change, and I commit it locally, right? And now I get uh, this little plus one. Which is telling me that you know my master branch has one commit that hasn't been pushed. So if I did another one, let me just show you. Second change. I'm gonna save that. 
Uh, I'm going to commit my second change, team commit second change. And I hit commit there. That's my change of So now you see it says, uh, you have two changes that you haven't pushed. So you do this, you know, you work locally, you commit, 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 commit. Then when you're ready to push to GitHub, you right click, and go team, and push to upstream. And uh, if everything works well, that should be it. It should get pushed. Master gets pushed to the master at GitHub. And uh, first and second changes got pushed. And now, when I go to GitHub, oops, I reload the page. Then I'll have, you know, second. So I can see, well, if you go commit here, you see the first change and second change have been committed and the files are you know, showing. Show the latest version. There you go. Uh, now that while I'm here, uh, another thing I wanted to show you is, uh, so, you know, in any case, just to make sure, at the end, your config file should look like this. And if you can, you can also not do all that funky stuff with a GUI and just edit the config file to look like this. Obviously, these are going to be different for your project, you know, the specific, but like, well, this will be exactly the same, uh, just this one, uh, which many times, sometimes it's a lot easier just to go and edit a text file instead of trying to figure out all the menus. Um, but uh, that's how you can tell this has been correctly set up. Uh, one of the nice thing about Eclipse that it does is, uh, you know, it has this div thing. I'm gonna close this, and uh, so say it make you know yet another change, yet another change. So you see, once I change a file, I get here. This is this bar here is of a different color than down here. This is white, and this is purple here, right here telling me that you know I've changed this but then when I save it uh, it goes away now it's all white uh, that's not very useful so what you just what you would really want is to show you the lines that have been changed since the last commit and you can get that by going to Eclipse preferences and then in Eclipse preferences you're going to search for quick diff and then uh, you're going to enable quick div and then show the versions with a git revision like that. And uh, you're going to then hit apply. Apply, apply. Okay, then you know, I need to close these and open them again. Hello world. So now, once you do that, you close them and open them again, then you see. The purple bar shows me the differences be from the last commit. So if I add, you know, make another change down here, and I save it, even after I save it, it still shows purple. So and those bars will go away once we commit these. So that's it.